Hey there, are you thinking about buying this new smart bassinet? I want to tell you the pros and cons about that. Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell of Helping Baby Sleep, a sleep consultant, and about 95% of my private one-to-one -one clients with babies four months or older have this new bassinet. So I've worked with this product quite a bit, and I want to go over the pros and cons of it. So there's lots of things that I really like about this new smart bassinet. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically a smart bassinet. It's a bassinet that gently can rock your baby um, and help them ease into sleep. When they wake up in the night and cry, the crying sound actually activates that rocking motion again to help soothe them back into sleep. It's developed by Dr. Harvey Karp, who's a renowned pediatrician and developed the five S's for soothing your baby. So there's a few things that I like about it. So let's run through those. So the first thing I like about the new smart bassinet is that it is American Academy Pediatric. Um, it meets their standards for sleep, safe sleep. So safe sleep standards are you want a firm, flat surface for your baby to sleep. And there are lots of products out there that do not meet those standards, such as Docatots, swings, rock and plays. But the Snoo Bassinet meets those standards for safe sleep surface, if you will. So I love that about the Snoo. The second thing I like about it is in the newborn phase, essentially, because the Snoo is great for babies up until about age four or five months of age. Your number one goal as a parent in this stage is to help keep your baby well rested because sleep begets sleep. So the more well rested they are, the easier it will be to help them fall asleep and then stay asleep. So in my practice, when I see kids that wake up like every hour after midnight, I know they're in some sort of a sleep debt where they're not getting enough sleep. It's harder for them to fall asleep and then stay asleep. So the snoo can help you because it's those automatic hands, if you will, that will help soothe them back to sleep in the, in the night. So I absolutely love that about the snoo. I also love that it has a built-in swaddle. Swaddling is imperative. It's been proven to help young babies um, stay calmer and sleep better. So it's actually got a built-in swaddle in the snoo to help them feel that comfort and it's completely safe. It actually prevents them from rolling. That would be one of the risks of swaddling is when as soon as your baby shows signs of rolling, you need to be getting them out of the swaddle. For most kids, those signs of rolling doesn't happen until four, maybe even five months of age, but it's just something that you should know about. But with the snoo, it's safe. It's, um, it's basically stitched into the bottom um, platform of this of the snoo so it's it's not a risk so i love that about it the other thing that i like about the snoo is that it can help you establish good sleeping habits if there's one thing i want you to remember from this broadcast today it's that drowsy but awake can set you up to fail i know it goes against everything you've ever heard or been taught about baby sleep but here's why sleep is a learned habit the drive to sleep is biological, yes, but sleep is a learned habit. If you think about yourself, if you tried to go to sleep tonight and I told you you couldn't sleep in your favorite position and I'm going to take away your pillow, that would be really uncomfortable for you. and You'd have to learn a new way of falling asleep. Okay, So sleep is a learned habit. And what the snoo does is it helps teach your baby that sleep, sleep is initiated in their sleeping environment rather than in arms or at the breast. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but those, those habits of always holding to sleep or nursing to sleep or rocking to sleep and then trying to transfer down, they can start to wear off when your kiddo starts to become more aware of their world and then you're transferring them and they're waking them up and then you're having to do that all over again. So drowsy but awake in my world can set people up to fail. And in my newborn class, I teach how to put your kids down calm but awake which is essentially what the snoo is doing, right? You're, you're teaching them that they fall asleep in their bassinet from awake, which is a great thing. So I love that about the snoo, absolutely. Now, there's a few things that I don't love about the snoo, so I'm gonna share those with you now. One, I don't love the price tag. At the time of this recording, it retails for $1,400. So it's not available, it's not really accessible for everyone, and it only lasts till four or five months. The second thing I don't love about it is I feel like it can delay your parenting troubleshooting skills because you've got this mechanical object to kind of help your baby in the night. So just from my experience, I've noticed that it can delay kind of the hands-on things of trying to figure out why your kiddo's struggling, how to help them. And then some of my clients report a real struggle, even though it has a weaning stage on it, struggle transferring from the snoo into the crib eventually. The other thing I don't like, it, like about it is it is yet another transient baby product. Like I said, it only lasts till four or five months. Like I'd rather you spend that $1,400 on a really good quality crib that's gonna last you until age two and a half with maybe a really good quality organic mattress. In general, at this stage, you know, whether you want or not you wanna use this new is up to you. I think there's definitely benefits to it, right? 
thing is, that motion of being put down calm but awake is something that we can do with our own hands. That's what I teach you in my helping newborn sleep class. How to put your baby down calm but awake and help her fall asleep in the crib, which is the place that you're aiming for long term. Your long term goal is that you can put your kids down awake, leave the room, they coo and babble themselves to sleep and can put themselves to sleep that way. So that's available in my helping babies sleep class. The four pillars of the class are prevention right? How to prevent your kiddo from getting overtired and getting fussy, which makes, it throws you into a negative feedback loop, which makes it harder to fall asleep and then stay asleep. Timing, super important in that with your feeding and your sleep. Feeding skills, we want you to be an intentional feeder so that it helps you rule out a variable of what's bugging your kiddo. Because one of the other things we teach in the class, the other pillar is how to become a great sleep detective to figure out why your child's fighting or struggling with sleep. And lastly, assisting. How to learn, learn how to put your kiddo down calm but awake so that they learn that sleep happens in the crib long term. Not that you can't have naps on you because gosh, those are beautiful and important in your bonding. But if you, your kiddo can only have naps on you, that can be really hard to maintain long term. Great speaking with you today. If you want to have some more quick tips about baby sleep, you can click the link below to take my six question, simple six question uh, baby sleep quiz. It'll give you one thing you're doing really well right now and maybe one thing that you can work on tonight.